to show a hack in progress, to teach me how to hack, uh, is John Herring from Lookout. So um, I thought it would be interesting to show a little bit about what a hack actually looks like in the real world. You know, we've been hearing a lot about um, things like the New York Times being compromised. You probably read about things like Evernote being compromised. And a lot of people don't really understand what's going on in the ecosystem. Um, it would be interesting to actually d dive in and look at how this actually is taking place. So um, let me walk you through what this actually looked like. Okay. So what we've got here is we've got two mobile devices. Um, and what my, I'm attempting to do is actually hack into this phone right here in order to intercept uh, text messages and ultimately actually take control of an email account as well. Okay. Um, this phone that you have here is going to be the control device. And what we'll end up doing is hack this phone on the left. And then once this has been hacked, all the information that flows through it, so the SMSs, will start coming to your device. And you can intercept them in real time. Okay. So um, really quickly, one of the most common vectors that we're actually seeing for targeted attacks, especially with things like the New York Times, is email. And what's really fascinating is actually how easy it is to spoof an email address. So you see here I have an email from Barack Obama down here in the middle of the screen, uh, or Walt Mossberg. And Walt did not send me this email, but it's very easy to make it look like an email came from Walt. It looks like his address, actually, right? Actually, exactly right. It came exactly from his address. And unless you are actually going into the email headers, which the average person isn't doing, it would be very hard to tell. Right here. Yeah. So, so, so what we have here is um, an email coming from, and I have a spoofed email from one of my colleagues, and it said, okay, amazing Tetris game, or there might be a PDF file. So Walt might e email you, or in this case, my colleague, it appears, has emailed me. And that was I'll, actually me, the hacker, right? Exactly. And what I'll do here is install the application. Um, this, this says, okay, hey, here's this Tetris game. Uh, it's going to access the network and then SMS messages. Users are usually clicking yes in this case. I click install, and the app's installed. So we installed an app from email instead of going to Google Play and finding exactly it Exactly right, exactly right. And the game, as you can tell, plays. It's um, you know, normal as one would expect. But in this case, what's happened is the device has just been hacked. And uh, what's actually taking place now is actually it's going to forward all emails to the control device. So you could actually snoop or intercept all emails. And um, if a message were to come through right now, one would be able to um, see it show up normally, as you would expect on this device. But then it'll also start to show up on, on this device as well. Um, and to be clear, uh, Lookout is not a hacking company. <laughs> <laughs> they defend you against hacks. Right. Um, uh, but oh, there we go. Exactly. This is coming up here. So if you see here, an SMS message just came through on my device. Oh, I got it too. And on the left, you see, hi, John, the deal is final. We own all things D. So I guess we're in <laughs> a different business. <laughs> and uh, on the right here, you'll see that you can actually um, read all the SMS messages that are coming through. OK. So something as simple as receiving an email, potentially from someone that seemed trustworthy, opening a file, in this case, an application. It could be a PDF with a vulnerability in it, um, and then an exploit payload that would allow you to um, implement uh, uh, interception of SMSs. OK. Now, um, one of the more interesting things that happens is once you have control of the device, other things can happen. And in this case, um, why SMS is particularly problematic is that it's used as an authentication mechanism. Right. So I, I don't know if you use Gmail. I do. Gmail, I, I, I do too, and I love it. Gmail often um, uses SMS uh, for password recovery, for example. Oh, right, yeah. And so if I were to know the email address of, 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 of the target um, and go ahead and reset G, the Gmail password, normally you couldn't get access to it. But in this case, since I'm intercepting all the SMS messages, what you see here is I actually just got the verification code from, from Google's servers. And you actually, on the target device, were, were able to intercept that. Um, so if you look on the left, you know, your Google verification code is 274901. And you see on, on your device, your Google verification code is 274901. So even though you have two-factor authentication, which is what everyone's doing now, that's like the new standard, you can break into it. Yeah, so this, in this case, it's not using um, two factors, but it's using SMS for password As recovery. As a second one? Exactly okay. right. got it. And so what you could do, there's a time interval on this, but if you were to actually go take this right Google now. verification code, what you would be able to do is uh, go onto Gmail, you know, go to the password recovery flows, enter that verification code, reset the password to something that you, you were in control of, and actually log into the Gmail account. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what's really fascinating about this is you can kind of see a very simple um, flow where you, you target a user, you spoof an email address, you put a file in place, and then you have a, a goal in mind. In this case, it's intercepting SMS messages. That can start to lead to a host of other components of compromise, which is, which is um, you know, examples of the types of things we've seen here. And we're seeing that happen to PCs, but also we're starting to see a fundamental shift in attacks to mobile devices as well as, as we kind of move into this post-PC era. Mm -hmm. So um, 
you know, as we So think, what can you do about that? I mean, does Lookout protect you against that? Yeah, so in this case, we would. So we're scanning applications to ensure they're not malicious. So you, you made a great point. That didn't come through Google Play. So um, most of the applications are pretty trusted in Google Play, and they're, they're working to make sure all of them are. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, one recommendation is make sure you're downloading applications from trusted sources. Okay. Um, and it's, it's uh, rare that you're going to get an application from, from someone you know. And in, in many cases, even if it's a PDF file, we really recommend that you're cognizant of the types of, of things that you're opening when you receive them. Mm -hmm. So download apps from trusted sources in, in all cases. If you see an application or a link coming from something you, you don't know or don't trust, definitely don't in, in, engage with that. Um, and then you know this is the type of thing that Lookout would protect against. Um, Vigilance is one of the most important things you can do, especially with these kind of targeted attacks, the ones we've seen against things like the New York Times, or um, we don't have specific knowledge, but probably what happened to Evernote was, was very sophisticated and in many cases. Um, allowed kind of persistence of threats by compromising one user and then moving on to others. Mm -hmm. um, is, this, um, is this an Android problem? Uh, in the demo we're showing here is actually uh, Android specific, but this is a problem that's computing specific, I would argue. So we're seeing exploit. But you don't see the ki this kind of exploit on iOS because there's an App Store, no, we, only the, an App Store. The, it, this is a application-based threat, and this is something that's specific to Android, but we definitely see security issues on all platforms. So iOS has had a number of security issues um, typically OS-based vulnerabilities, mm -hmm. um, which exist on Android as well. Both are pretty vigilant about patching those vulnerabilities. In this case, this is kind of an application-specific threat. Um, and I wouldn't say that it's, it's, it's not clean cut that, OK, Android has security issues and iOS doesn't. Mm -hmm. the, the bad guys are going where users exist, and especially in the case of a targeted attack. So what would be really fascinating to me as, as time evolves is looking at um, especially senior leaders of companies, like what does someone like Walt carry? What does President Obama carry? You start to look, and the attacks are going to shift uh, from a targeted perspective to the platforms that, that the most important people are carrying. Hmm. OK. OK, so uh, can I log into your email? Yeah, so if you, um, on this right device here, on the control device, um, basically you will have um, uh, taking control of this and the Gmail account set up so the information automatically flows over. And what you can see here um, is that you now have access to my email. And if you wanted to, um, you could respond from my email. And you know, supposedly, uh, 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 the all things D transaction has taken place. And you could respond and, and, and um, do something to manipulate that transaction, for example. Right, and it would right. Seem you're like it you're owning our th all things D. OK. Sorry, guys, this is a little bit canned, but I kind of want to reply to Walt. <laughs> uh, let's see. And Walt will actually uh, receive this email. Oh, because it's not—it's spoofed in the sender, but in the exactly. receiver, it's not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm writing from you. So, um, hi, Walt. We will actually actually pay double. <laughs> So now I've successfully negotiated against myself. Yes, um, good job. And now Walt will receive that email. <laughs> I'm a hacker. I can do what I want. You can. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, thanks so much, John, yeah, for the demo. Awesome. Thanks.